Hey guys, welcome back to the Midweek Escape Artist. My name is Andre, and uh, we are here to camp today. <laughs> it's been uh, about two weeks since I was out last, and um, I'm very excited to be here. So today we're at the Deep Creek Trig Campground, site number one. I think you'd recognize this place from a previous video where I nearly got blown away by the wind, and uh, I'll link that up there for you if you've not seen it. Um, so I'm basically in exactly the same spot. Um, I really enjoy coming here. The scenery is amazing. It's always very quiet. I've never seen anyone else here when I come camp, so <laughs> that's always a nice benefit. Um, but guys, the plan for today, I am going to have a coffee and some lunch, and uh, we're going to hang around for a couple of hours. The sun sets at about 8.53, I think I checked. Um, at which point I've got to show you a very cool new piece of kit that I made myself, which I'm very proud of. <laughs> so we'll test that out tonight and um, yeah, we're just going to have a great time. It's going to be a bit of a slow camp. Um, I don't have anyone else joining me, just by myself. And uh, yeah, let's have a great old time. But first things first, I need to uh, get a coffee on and uh, relax for a bit. Alright guys, I'll bring you back for coffee. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty here today. The clouds are coming over a little bit, so exposure is dropping a touch. It feels very, it feels very cozy. I think cozy is the right word. It's got a, it's got a density to it. Um, I love it. It's my favorite weather. Um, I don't think we're going to get any more rain, but it's possible, judging by the sky. But anyway, let's have some lunch. Um, so today I've got some marinated olives with me and some really really nice king's whiskey cheddar cheese and some south african biltong that i brought from home it's one of my favorite snacks it's incredibly healthy it's just protein and fats it's awesome now obviously if you're vegan this is not going to work for you but um i like it so welcome everyone welcome to camp if this is your first video <laughs> hello <laughs> if you're a returning viewer thank you so much i love that you've come back um i hope you enjoy this one as, as much as the uh, as the other ones and uh yeah let's uh let's have a nice little camp and have some food and relax cheers everyone mm. it's good so how have you guys been what's been new um also pretty cool the channel's been growing 
slowly. You guys are amazing. Um, I never thought the channel would even get close to a thousand uh, subscribers, but we're almost there now. Um, so yeah, I have no idea what to expect when we hit that mark. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I don't think much is going to change in the channel itself. Um, this is what I'm into. This is what I like doing. So I'm not going to change up any of the formatting. But yeah, it would be cool to see, you know, how the channel responds to hopefully becoming a financially viable entity. <laughs> you guys, like you know, I mean, I'm not sponsored in any way. Everything you see, I've bought with my own money. Um, so it does get challenging from time to time, but I love it. It's great fun. It would be nice for it to be financially viable as well, but you know, that's obviously not the main goal. But yeah, guys, I want to keep going with my lunch. I'm going to show you what this place looks like before it buckets down with rain, potentially. Um, so yeah, let's do that. Right, guys, I thought I'd take you for a little tour of the uh, campgrounds. You're not just looking at the same campsite the whole time. Let's turn it around here. So, Trig Campground in Deep Creek is a pretty interesting campground because it is very much a bush setting. Um, it's all native bush native trees native plants and it's really quite nice so if you wanted a good example of the South Australian landscape before people this is what it looked like um, now this campground in particular at the moment when I'm recording this it's $34.50 a night which is slightly on the steep side um, in my opinion because the facilities you have here are very basic um, there is a there is a toilet and there is a rainwater tank but that's about it I think there's like 25 26 somewhere between 20 and 30 campsites it's massive it's a huge park um, where we are today is campsite number one that's where it sort of starts and then there's two distinct groups of camps. Um, I think it's one to one to eleven or one to twelve is in the same sort of grouping area. Sites aren't very close together. There is a reasonable distance between them. There's also a little hut for sheltering because this campground is on the Hasten Trail. So you get a lot of hikers, through hikers and day hikers that come through here that um, end up staying over um, so there's a little bit of shelter for them so I'm gonna flip the camera around so you can see what I'm seeing 
if I can figure out how to do it. There we go. So, there we go, guys. So this is the older part. I, I, I believe it's the older part. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, it's a very, very nice, very interesting bush setting. So there's a little hut. There's a table in there. Let me just reverse so you can see it better. Now there's a little hut there with a table, which is quite nice. Um, it's quite sheltered. Pretty cool. So this is campsites 13 to 25. So apparently there's 25 different campsites. Um, so most of these are suitable for large rigs um, and tents and they do say that the campground is accessible with a normal car, two-wheel drive and yes that is true <laughs> but I wouldn't want to do it with a two-wheel drive especially during winter and the rainy season um, I think you'd struggle I really do um, let me bring it over this way so you can see a little bit better of what this place looks like um, it's very nice it's very quiet it's very serene they've done a really good job at maintaining the uh, the natural feeling of the campground um, and you know, like I said you know a standard car would make it would probably be fine um, but yeah during winter I don't think I'd recommend it. <laughs> it's very cool though. I do like it a lot. And that's it guys, that's everything. So we're just driving past campsite number 25. All the campground all the campsites have fire pits on them. Most of them are reasonably sheltered with trees around and some cover yeah so I think this is a fantastic little campground um, like I said you probably want to be self-sufficient when you come here um, the facilities are very 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 basic and um, at $34 a night you know I don't know who you are what your life is like but in my brain that is a little bit on the expensive side but um, you know it is what it is we're here to have a good time and um, if you got to pay 34 bucks a night to come out to a place like this I don't think it's unreasonable but there are cheaper sites with better facilities <laughs> but I like Deep Creek I really do um, they do a good job at maintaining it it's always clean so yeah guys tree campground at Deep Creek I like it I'm gonna go back to camp now. I think <laughs> I think you've seen enough of me talk. All right, I'll see you guys back at camp. So earlier I told you about a new piece of kit that I'm very excited about and I am very excited about it because I built it myself and um, yeah it's getting cold so I think it's time for me to show you what I'm talking about. Let's get it. <laughs> I didn't build that. I built this. This is my little gas fire pit. Let me tell you about it. <laughs> this is a little gas powered fire pit. Now, I can't take credit for the idea. Um, I saw this online a while back. 
and there are quite a few different iterations of this but it seemed fairly simple and easy so I built one and we're going to test it out today okay so I don't know where in the world you're watching this but if it's anything like Australia you'd know that there are fire bans pretty much everywhere all of the time <laughs> that basically means that you are prohibited from having a wood powered fire um, at a campground or just you know out in nature and that does make camping a little problematic a campfire for me is camping and without it it doesn't feel the same and it's not as enjoyable so I uh, spent a bit of time having a look around trying to find an alternative something gas powered or liquid powered and um, I ended up coming up with this so this is a 50 caliber ammo can that I've converted into a gas fire pit it was very easy to do I just went to our local hardware store got some plumbing pipe and some fixtures and a hose I went to our local adventure shop got the ammo can and uh, I got myself a 3.7 kilo gas bottle now I have no idea how long this gas bottle is going to last me I'll uh, update you maybe maybe I'll put it on the screen somewhere tomorrow when I get home I'll see how much gas I've got left if any and uh, I'll tell you how much it used but in my testing so far it's been really efficient um, in the plumbing pipe burner I've only got four holes and they're really 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 tiny holes in fact it's the smallest thinnest drill bit that I had I put four little holes in spread across the bar and um, yeah it seems reasonably efficient but what I'll do now is I'm going to connect this all up we're going to light it and um, see how we go <laughs> so I'm just going to open the gas bottle very demurely there we go not even a tenth of a turn open on the gas and that's what we're getting I've got about a kilo of lava rock in there underneath that there's a steel grate that I put in underneath that is the plumbing pipe burner with four holes connected to some brass fittings gas hose 3.7 kilo gas bottle and that's it and I think it's fantastic okay so what do you think <laughs> I think it's awesome I think it's absolutely awesome so basically what this means is I can now have a campfire when there's fire ban on this is 100% legal it's uh, not wood powered it feels the same now obviously it's not going to put out as much heat as a campfire and you don't get the wood smell but apart from that it's awesome it makes a ton of light it makes a ton of heat it's really small and compact it weighs almost nothing and you can power it from a small little gas bottle like that now I, I have seen hoses that have the same connection that um, connect to a small uh, propane bottle like you know the Coleman style propane bottle I think those are very interesting and from the research that I've done one of those little bottles in this configuration should give you between two to four hours of burn time on the lowest setting which is very impressive um, so instead of bringing one huge gas bottle like that you can bring three or four of the Coleman ones and um, I, I'm not endorsing this but if you're very clever you can refill those from a big gas bottle as well just saying <laughs> but no guys I absolutely love this um, if I had to do it again I probably would use lightweight Hades stones which are like ceramic stones I'll probably use those in there next time and I, I still might I might still swap them out um, I would put a hole in for the lighter to light the fire more efficiently um, which I will still do 
And the last thing that I'll do, which I couldn't do because I couldn't find it, is to put an air mixer at the at the bottom at the join. Um, basically, what that does is it sucks in air and mixes it with the gas. So by the time it ignites, it's a much cleaner burn. At the moment, I am getting some sooting on the rocks themselves, um, so the air mixer will avoid that, which will be cool, especially if I'm going to be using white ceramic stones in there. <laughs> But yeah, guys, there we go. Gas powered fire pit. Um, I'm gonna be using this extensively tonight. I'm gonna just leave it on from now on. Um, I do have a windbreak that I'm gonna put up because these things are very susceptible to wind interference. So I'll put up a windbreak and um, we'll see how we go. <laughs> I think it's amazing. Um, one thing I should mention to you is I can't hear the gas bottle. There's no hissing, there's no noise, there's no sound. And uh, if you're in a setting like this, even if there was a little bit, you wouldn't hear it. Um, it'll blend into the background. You wouldn't even know it's on. Um, but I think this is great. Totally great. So in my testing that I've done at home, the unit itself does get warm. But the bottom doesn't get that warm. It, it was about 40 degrees when I, when I tested it last time after running it for about an hour. Which is very interesting. Um, I was expecting it to heat up a lot more. The stones get to about 100 degrees, 150 degrees around there. Um, and once they've been going for a while, they do radiate a lot of heat. Um, like for now, I'm here and I can feel it. So, you know, if you're going out camping by yourself or if you have a small group of people with you, this is a very, very cool idea. Very cool solution to fire bands and all that sort of stuff. Um, so normally when I go out camping and I'm gonna have a campfire, you have a 20 kilo bag of wood. Uh, 20 kilos is a lot of weight to put in your car. This fire pit with my gas bottle weighs under six. So I don't know how much time I'm gonna get out of it, but I think it'll be equivalent um, to having one bag of wood for a night. The other cool thing with this is you can cook on this um either with a pan or with a grate of some kind now i wouldn't just put stuff on a grate on the fire um i don't think that's ideal although having said that i'm sure it's it's no different to having a, a gas barbecue um, at home but i think for me if i am going to cook on this it'll be with a pan um, but that should work just fine um, i'm not going to do that tonight um, but yeah guys i'm going to keep going what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Is this something that you're interested in? Is this something you would use or build yourself? Um, I did get the idea from a company in the US called Lava Box. I think they're amazing. You guys do amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Um, I copied your design a little bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's great, guys. I'm going to keep going. Super happy with that. Cheers, everyone. Welcome to camp. And uh, I'll catch up with you again for, uh, for dinner. Cheers. Oh. Oh, I just love it so much. It's so cool. I'm uh, very, very impressed and happy with this little setup. And I think it's awesome. During summertime, if you still want to have a fire, like, you know, I'm sure you would, 
this is the perfect solution for that. It's cozy. It doesn't make smoke. It doesn't make soot. It doesn't make ash or embers or sparks. You don't get the wood smell. It's one thing. But uh, apart from that, I think it's fantastic. It feels like a normal fire. I love it, guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining me on this one. I'm having a great time. I hope you're enjoying it as well. If you have any suggestions or comments, please chuck them in the comments below. And um, I'll try to respond to everyone if I can. i got to say thank you to uh, our uh, sponsor, Steve. Steve74, thank you for the beers. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you'd like to support us with some fuel or some beers or a bit of equipment, there's a link down below in the description for our um, sponsor pages. Also, some of the links I use are affiliate links. I get a very small percentage from that. Um, every little bit helps, guys. Thank you. Cheers. As I know, right, it's summer in Australia and I look like a freaking Eskimo. Um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> that's it. Right there. I think that's cool. I can feel it from over here. It's amazing. Um, oh, I'm having a great time, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to start doing dinner in... Oh, maybe like 20 minutes. Very simple dinner tonight. Don't expect anything fancy. Yeah, I'll bring you back for that. <laughs> Cheers, everyone.
Alright everyone, dinner time, super simple tonight, chicken schnitzel with coleslaw and some cheese and some hot sauce on a brioche bun, <laughs> yes, I'm hungry, I'm so hungry, it's cold now, fire is keeping me warm, but uh, I'm going to tuck into this and uh, I'll come back to you after, it's not bad. Super easy to make. I didn't do anything. <laughs> it's probably a bit of a cheat meal. <laughs> anyway, we can't be uh, chefs all the time. Sometimes I just want something easy and quick. And there we go. I've had a wonderful, wonderful night. Um, the gas bottle update, it still feels full. It feels the same way it did when I, uh, when I brought it out of the car. And uh, we've literally been going for six hours. And I've had it at that level since I've turned it on. So <laughs> it's pretty good, six hours. That's um, exceeded, well exceeded a 20 kilo bag of firewood. Um, now, there are still benefits to having a real fire. Um, I'll be the last person to dispute that. It's nice having a fire, the crackle, the smell of the smoke and the wood, processing the wood. All of that stuff is incredibly enjoyable. And um, this does by no means replace that. But it is a very viable alternative. If that's what you're into, if that's what you're looking for, I would consider one of these. Now there's a few of them on the market. Lava Box, there's Ignic, um, and there's like the traditional round ones as well from like Outdoor Living and Camp Chef. So have a look around, see what you prefer. It's really made my night so much more enjoyable. Now, I didn't see any signs that you're not allowed to have a fire here at the moment, but it is technically outside of fire season, so I didn't want to risk it, and now I don't have to, which is great. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining me for the evening. I'm uh, going to sign off, and I'm going to enjoy the fire for another half an hour or so, climb into my bed, and maybe watch a movie. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the morning for... Uh, coffee and breakfast.
if I wake up early enough, <laughs> which I should do. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you have a good evening, good day, whatever you're doing. And um, yeah, I'll catch up with you guys uh, in a few hours. for my day but yeah guys let's go grab let's go grab a coffee and uh let's grab some tea